So now we have our additional providers installed as dependencies in our persistence project. We've adjusted our migrations so that they're suitable for any of these three providers that we now have inside our project. So we're good for MySQL, SQL Server or SQLite. And what we want to do now is if we're running in production mode, we want to use MySQL. And if we're running in development mode, we want to use SQLite. And let's see how we can achieve that. And first of all, we'll need a connection string for MySQL. And let's go to the Explorer view. And inside our API, we've been using appsettings.json for our connection string. Now, appsettings.json is read from our configuration, whichever environment we're running in. If we're running in development or production, then it's going to read this one. But we've also got an appsettings.development.json that we haven't been using. And this one is only read from whilst we're in development mode. So let's take our connection string from app settings. I'm just going to copy this into my clipboard and paste this into appsettings.development.json. And what we'll do in our appsettings.json, we'll define the MySQL connection string instead. And a MySQL connection string has a server, and that's going to be equal to localhost, then a semicolon, then we specify the database name, and this is going to be reactivities. And then we give a UID, the user ID, which in this case is going to be equal to app user, and the password in this case is going to be equal to the password I created, which is PA dollar dollar W0RD. And this is a MySQL connection string. Now, if you're on Windows and you are horrified by the thought of installing MySQL and you're just want to use SQL Server, that's equally fine. And what you'll need to do is just use a SQL Server connection string instead. And you can get that if you're not sure what it should look like from connectionstrings.com and the SQL Server section. And the type of connection string you want to use for a SQL Server looks something like this. And you would obviously use that in place of the one that I'm demonstrating here. But for the demo at this stage, we're using MySQL. So this is the connection string we want. And we also want to define which provider or which connection string to use based on which environment we're running in. And we can control that via the startup class. And inside the startup class, where we look at our configure services section, this is for any environment. So when we use configured services here, this is going to be read. This is for any particular environment, development, production, whatever. But what we can also do is be more specific about which environment we're running in here as well. And what we can do is just above this, I'm going to add another configure services. And I'm going to say public void configure, in this case, development services. And we'll pass in the iService collection of services. And inside here, all we're going to do, I'm just going to cut the add DB context from the configure services and just paste it inside this one. And after this, what I'll do is I'll call the configure services method and pass in the services. And then what we'll do is we'll just simply copy this and paste it below. And this one will be for production services. And what we'll do instead of using SQLite in this case, we'll say use MySQL. And again, we'll configure services. So depending which environment we're running in, if we're in development, then we're going to use SQLite. And if we're in production, then we're going to use MySQL. And obviously, if you were using SQL Server, you would just use use SQL Server instead of MySQL there. But as I mentioned on this particular demo, I'm using MySQL. And then what we can do now that we've got this configuration set up is we can change the environment that we're running in so that when we run in production, we're going to call this method and 
where I'm going to use my SQL and based on all of the other configuration we've set up in our program.cs file nothing else changes when we start our application we're going to migrate our database which is going to apply all of our existing migrations and create the database if it's not already been created and then we're going to see the data based on the rules and configuration we've got in there so we basically don't need to do anything else well we do but let's take a look at what we need to do first and let's go to our properties inside our API into the launch settings.json and what we want to do is come down to the API profile here and change development to production and then what we want to do is go into our terminal window and what we can do is simply run .NET run and this should start our application in production mode and we're gonna hit a problem and we do and I get a warning saying .NET quit unexpectedly that's fine I was kind of expecting this and if we take a look at the error it's saying that the string reference not set to an instance of string and then it's telling us it's got an issue with system text encoding get bytes and this is in our startup class on line 97 and if we take a look at our startup class on line 97 and see what this is trying to do what we'll find is that line 97 is trying to get our token key from our configuration and where is this configuration stored well this is stored in our dotnet user secrets and .NET user secrets is only for development that does not get read from in production and that's why we get this particular error so what we're going to need to do is configure our contents of our user secrets inside our app settings.json so that our production environment can read that configuration so what we'll do is we'll say .NET user dash secrets and list and what we'll need to do is, is populate all of these inside our app settings.json. So what we'll do is we'll create a new section for Cloudinary. And inside here, we'll give it the cloud name. And it has to be spelt exactly as it is down here. And I'll just copy this into my clipboard and paste it inside here and then we'll add the API secrets and paste the contents of that inside here and then do the same for API key and once again just copy this into my clipboard and paste it inside here and then we'll need to add another section for the token key and I'll just copy the super secret key and paste it inside here and then just add the comma. Now this configuration inside this app settings.json this can be read by production. So what we should find is if we try and start our application again then this should work okay. So I'll just do the .NET run again and we now get our application running but what we should also find is if I go back to the Explorer window and go to my SQL and just refresh what we should find is we've now got our reactivities database in here with all of our tables and if I right click and select the top 100 and take a look at the results tab and don't need that anymore then we can find that all of our activities from our seed data have been populated inside here and we do get to see a proper GUID inside the ID column when we're using MySQL so what we should find is if we go back to our browser and I'll just log out of this particular user and log back in and because we're seeding our users as well we should have access to the same users we were using before with the same passwords and if I click log in then we can log in and all is good and we should be able to view our activities everything should work let's just make sure the chat works I'll click add reply and we see the chat inside there we don't have any images obviously because this is now a reseeded clean database and if I go back and I take a look at an activity that I'm not currently going to 
and try and join the activity. That's fine. I can cancel my attendance. Can add more chat in a different event. And all of the functionality should work just as it did before. But now we're running inside a MySQL database instead of running from SQLite. Which is great, but we're not going to be expecting people to visit our development machine for our website. And what we really want to do is publish this onto a proper server that's living on the internet. But now we've seen how to easily switch our database. And if we wanted to change this to a SQL Server database, then really all it's a case of doing is just changing our connection string information and changing the provider in our startup class. And we can swap the databases very quickly and very easily just by doing what we've looked at here. But our website isn't going to be very popular if it stays on our development machine. And what we want to look at next is how we can publish this to a Linux server. And that's what we're going to start with. Since we've taken a look at MySQL and we've set up our startup class for MySQL, what we'll look at next is publishing this to a Linux server and how we can do that.